the magic wand tool is great if you have only a few colors in your image so it's really easy to select all the whites or all the reds etc that's actually one reason people uh, or not people but Hollywood films with uh, green screens and uh, you know sometimes blue screens but in the background because then they can quickly select everything they don't want and delete it and add in imagery that they want so avatar for example to you know add the world around the characters they just selected all the blue deleted it because they recorded it in front of a, a green screen or a blue screen and then um, added their mag digital magic. However, sometimes it's difficult. Like, take this image here of, I think it's an F-16. I don't know, maybe it's an F-15. I don't really know my military technology. But let's say that we wanted to have this image flying over our map. And really, who doesn't? I mean, this is pretty awesome. It's a pretty powerful image. If we could get the plane out from the, this mountain background and put it flying over our map, and, you know, kind of an intimidating uh, scenario there. Well, the wand tool is great. We could click on objects, but notice that with a 32 tolerance, it's um, there's there's not much contrast between the plane itself and the background, which is also kind of this gray, topish color. So it's not going to work so well here. Now, there's some other tools you can use. You can use the magnetic lasso tool. We can look at these here. Uh, magnetic lasso tool follows along borders um, pretty well and you can draw around objects fairly successfully but this is also pretty clunky and so it might be a nice place to start but I wouldn't recommend it and it's nothing to write home about so um, the tool I want to introduce you to today is awesome it hasn't been around for every Photoshop but in the most recent uh, iterations it has been it's hidden with the magic wand tool so if you hit W depending which one is selected that tool will pop up or you can click and hold over the magic wand tool and select the quick selection tool. What the quick selection tool does is it allows you to uh, it basically uses algorithms and it figures out what colors you're most likely to want to select based on what you've selected before. At least I think that's how it works. So uh, one thing I'll say before we start using this tool, the slower you go, the smarter its selections will be. So don't try to speed through super fast because it'll make more mistakes. So, the quick selection tool. Um, you start over a spot that you want to add to your selection. In this case, I'll start in the middle of the wing. And you slowly move the cursor along areas that you want to include in your selection. So notice I am getting the wing here. I want to get that little wing ding there. And you just click and hold down the mouse button. Now, notice that here it just, you can let go of the mouse button and, and when you click and drag more it'll add more to your selection so you don't have to hold the shift key here. Notice that it accidentally selected some of this this blue stuff, some of the sky in between the wings here. Don't worry, we'll go back and fix that in a second. So just keep uh, clicking and dragging and it starts to get smarter. It starts to see, oh, you probably want to select this. Uh-oh, it just selected this whole upper left-hand corner. Oh dear, how can I fix this? If you hold down the Alt key, it subtracts selected areas. So if you hold down the Alt key and click, it will subtract from the area you have selected. And just like that, I've gone back to having just my wings selected. All right. We'll go down here where it's a little bit safer. I'm selecting more and more of the plane. We'll go up here. And I, see, the faster you go, the more mistakes it makes. So I'm going to take the hit the Alt key again and click and drag here. It's pretty good. just selected the whole wing very quickly there which is good I mean it's smart but sometimes it'll select more than you want so be careful and actually I find to be quite honest it's better to have selected too much than too little because you can always go back and, and um, remove too much information or too much too many pixels but you can't add pixels that are missing so for example if 
you forget to select something and then you go to add it to your map and you're missing half a wing, you're kind of in trouble. All right, so I'm gonna. This is gonna be very rough uh, for just to keep this brief because you don't really care about how well I can select an airplane. But like this, we now have um, the airplane selected, and uh, the trick now is to figure out how to remove some of these extra, you know, mountains that it got in here. So um, notice that here and here, there's some. You can see some background here and we can do that with this tool by holding down the alt and, and clicking like that but in some places we want to fine-tune it a little bit so up here on the properties bar we have basically a brush size or the size of the um, I guess you could say the selection tool I'm gonna to make this finer I'm gonna make it down to size 4 and I'm going to if you hold the alt key and use the scroll wheel you can zoom in and out on your map and don't forget if you hold the space bar you'll get a hand you can click and drag it, and as soon as you let go of the space bar, uh, your tool comes back. So I'm going to hold down Alt here and remove some of these pixels that I don't want. I'm going to add some of these ones here. And so like this, we can fine-tune this to be exactly what we want. I think my problem is up here. So a lack of contrast can be a bit problematic but we will fix it and I need to add a little bit more here All right, if we zoom out, it's looking pretty good. And uh, I'll zoom in down here. Whoops, that's the wrong way. Sorry if any of you just got vertigo. And we will do this. So hold down the, the Alt key will be your friend. You can make mistakes, you can select too much, but like I said, it's um, almost easier to remove than to select perfectly the first time. So. Um, it's kind of a, a cost-benefit analysis with your time. So once you have this, okay, that's great, but actually what we want to do is delete uh, the background, not, not the plane itself. So there are a couple options we have here. First of all, you can copy and paste your image. So if you go up to Edit, Copy, this is a neat thing about Photoshop. Once you've copied something in Photoshop, if the next, you know, the next new image you create, if you go to File New, the preset size will be to the same size as what you just copied. So I'm going to hit OK, and if you hit Edit Paste, it's going to be the perfect size. So this is one option. Another option is to go to Select Inverse. And inversing means like select everything you don't have selected. So I'm going to hit Select Inverse, and I'm going to hit Delete and then we'll get this contents fill thing I'm gonna make it all white actually no I'm gonna make it all um, I'm gonna make it all red green let's go green green screen so we'll hit OK and now we have our own little green screen um, so this is one way of, of doing this here now uh, as you learned with the uh, in the previous uh, tutorial, I think it was the Magic Wand tool, how to make make transparent backgrounds. If you want to make a transparent background, you need to duplicate the background layer, delete the background layer, and then delete the background. So it was still selected. Um, as you can see, because there's a little bit of green. <laughs> uh, Impinging here, you might need to do a little bit more touching up. Let's go back to this image here. And one thing I want to show you is that sometimes it's nice to paste it over a white background or a different colored background so you can see where you kind of messed up. It might look great uh, when you've deleted and selected things, but when you put it over a map, what you're going to see are some of these remnants. And so a great thing you can do with uh, here is 
where is it? Uh, the eraser tool. If you take the eraser tool, you can touch this up pretty quickly and get rid of some of these remnants that you find. Um, the eraser tool is pretty, I mean, the name tells you what it does. It erases. It's kind of dangerous, so be careful. You could also go in and select it with the uh, magic wand tool or a selection tool and delete it. Same idea. I'm actually going to delete this. It's part of the wing, but I want to make it look more authentic because it was a kind of a hack job. With the eraser tool, I can change the size of the eraser to fit into, into little nooks. Oops. Oops, I don't want to erase here. Come on, give me the hand. Stan. So I made the eraser size smaller so that I can go in here and actually just clean this up pretty significantly. So variety of options for cleaning up images. I'm going to delete the background. We'll go here. Let's hit File, Save. Save as a PNG or a TIFF again if you want a transparent background. Photoshop tends to want you to save it as a Photoshop file, which I think would also embed in Illustrator, so that might be fine. You can play around with that on your own. I'll save this one as a TIFF, plain. Um, one thing I will say about t saving as a TIFF, and this is important, TIFF files are often very large, um, unless you use compression, and LZW compression is uh, not proprietary anymore. It's a great way to compress TIFF, file, TIFF files and make them very small and readable, so you should always compress your TIFFs. Uh, there's no reason not to. Um, it, they'll warn you that some computers can't open them, but anyone that's using a computer that can't open one of these compression formats, um, they should probably shouldn't be opening your files anyway because that computer's going to be so slow. Um, another thing to worry about with, with, uh, with images is having layers that will increase file size. I don't think we actually have multiple layers, so I don't know why I was freaking out there. All right, so we hit save. Let's go to Illustrator, and I'm not trying to imply that uh, Indonesia is going to be invaded, but let's just add this image, TIFF import options, convert layers to objects. All right, we'll do that, and ta-da! We have a fighter jet that we can rotate um, as we will over our map. And this is how you add supplemental graphics quickly and easily using Photoshop to your maps. Thank you.